Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Floralurianism. One to reach back to the time when we talked about Krita and doing 2D animation. In the last video that we touched on this, we were looking at using reference video to draw. Today, I just wanted to do a deep dive and really how do you do animation? Because I kind of jumped through it last time to explain some things, but I really wanted to take the time to draw it out, no pun intended, and show you how to do this in Krita. So, let's do it. So once again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. Thank you so much for joining in for today. If this is your first time watching these videos, I do a lot of work on this channel to build a community of learning to surface the cheap or free art technologies so that you can know about them and make good use of them. So thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Uh, looking again at Krita. If you're not familiar with Krita, it's a fantastic open source application for doing graphical and illustration. And I've even done a little bit of photography work in it. Um, so there's a lot of videos in that. Feel free to go back and watch some of those. But for today, there's a very prominent piece that lives in Krita for doing 2D animation. And it's based very much on the traditional hand-drawn model. It's all digital, but it's still based on that approach. And I wanted to take a step through. There have been a lot of questions about it, and I wanted to answer those. I did explain some of the facets of the interface, and I'm actually going to take myself off here. Um, so you can see the full screen of things. But I just wanted to give a really detailed explanation of, of how this all fits together so you can know how it is. So I will say that you will need, let me turn myself back on, <laughs> you will need a digital pen uh, to get the most out of this particular module of Krita. You can do it with a mouse, and I've tried that, but it gets very difficult because it's, it's not the same as getting the fine detail you'd get when you're holding a pencil or pen and, and drawing that way. So uh, I would recommend that. It's not necessary, but know that that's what I'm using. It helps to get some of the textured look that I have and some of the um, pressure uh, sensitivity you'll notice in the, the drawings that I've done. So know that. Okay. All right. So to get into the animation workspace, what you have to do first is you have to use this button up here. You'll start in the default one. That's the, the common one that you'll see when you first use Krita. Animation brings you to this layout where you have a timeline down below and you get some controls and dockers along the left here. This one here will be very familiar. In fact, this should be very familiar as well because these are the common tools. Um, but yeah, these are very, very prominent in the other workspace because you use them to do drawings and to make layers and do all the things that you would normally do, which, by the way, those same operations that you could do in the other screen, you can still do. You make your layers and you group them and you do that kind of stuff. You can still do that here. You know that functionality is still here. Some of these these controls that you that you would normally do up here do kind of follow down here into the timeline, and I'll touch on those in a moment. Um, really, any of these controls will work as you're drawing out the different frames. Um, so they are available if they do not appear, um, like if there's a specific docker that you're missing that you really want to turn on again, what you have to do is go to Settings, Dockers, and then flip on that respective docker. Um, there might be a, one of those from the other screen that you rely on, for example, you might want to flip on the, um, the brushes. That's the patterns. <laughs> we want to get the brushes. There it is. So that could be useful because you may want to change what you're doing. All right. That's how you flip them on and or off. Click the X to get rid of them. So now again, back to over here. I've kind of pre-done a simple, very basic flower painting drawing sketch. And I wanted to animate a petal falling off and landing on the ground. That's what we're going to achieve today. Down below here, I already have a layer prepped up. That's this layer six. These other layers are the different other pieces of it. I'll kind of click them on and off here so you can see what they are. And the last one is the, the center of it here. And 
we're going to draw in that last piece. And the reason that I'm going to do this one separately is so that we can animate it and keep it separate. Um, anything you want to control, think in terms of those layers, that you want to manipulate them separately, and layers are your friend here. All right. <laughs> so continuing down along the controls over here, uh, this is the kind of the, the frame stepper where you can move up or down very simply to see what you know is on the timeline. These are again the individual frames. Start is what frame you want your project to start with. It doesn't have to be zero. You could have that set to start at frame six or you know wherever you want to go with this. Ending is the end of the project. So for me, I'm doing approximately one second. Um, to achieve the illusion of fluid motion, you need at least 24 frames. Uh, and these are on a per second basis. So this is one second of footage I'm going to, to build out here, one second. This I think starts at 100, so you do have to adjust that. I set mine to 24. Down here, this is the playback speed, and I'll just show you quickly um, what happens there. You could step this down to 50% or lower. That could be really helpful to kind of get a good sense of, of seeing things in more graduated motion rather than in real time, and that'll become more clear as we have an opportunity to see frames uh, drawn in there. So that's what that'll do. I'm going to keep that at real time. And the frame rate is, again, how many frames per second, which I'm keeping that at 24 just to keep that basic and easy, and we can get through this. <laughs> Over here, uh, this is what you have to do to start. So working here, I'm going to select into my layer that I expect to be working in. There's nothing there. I'm going to click inside of that, and I'm going to click Add Blank Frame. That's important because you need something to draw on. You need a frame. <laughs> All right, that's where it begins. Now, because I already know kind of what I'm going to do with this, you may not know, but this can be useful if you have like um, an anticipated number of frames you're going to be using in sequence. You don't have to animate every frame. Um, if you can get that meticulous if it needs to be extremely fluid. I found that about every three frames or so you can still get some reasonable animation. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. But if you wanted to be really fluid, of course, every frame would be uh, the ideal. So I'm going to add in some keyframes here and just set them up. Um, actually, I know I'm going to need, I kind of pre-did this out so I could figure some of this out. Keyframes, I'm right-clicking, by the way, and I'm going to insert multiple keyframes, and I'm just going to say that I want eight. And for frame timing, this is the amount of time each frame will take. You could step that up if you wanted to. It's up to you. And I want this to appear to the right of where I'm working. It's also important. All right, so... These don't have anything yet. These are like placeholders of what I am going to do. All right. Right now, they don't count for anything other than they, they, the only value is that they're meant to hold something and now they hold nothing. <laughs> okay. Next thing over here is adding a duplicate frame, duplicating what you've already done. That could be useful. Uh, this one is to remove frames. That's pretty obvious. Onion skinning gives you some control over what the colors will be and if you're not familiar with onion skinning we'll, we'll touch on that but really all that is is you get to see the frame before and that's really useful with this kind of animation because you can anticipate the movement more accurately so turning that on down here in the timeline is the bulb but up here the settings are under the onion skin button all right auto frame uh, that has to do with continuing to draw uh, where there is you know that's that's going to help you with adding in data as you draw and that's that can be useful to have on there's really no benefit to having it off so much when you have it off if you do drawing somewhere without that it will assume you're drawing back to frame the last frame that you've added so that can be kind of dangerous unless you want to work that way so just know that i usually keep it on because i when i move on i intend to keep animating but that's what that does <laughs> and drop frames has to do with playback Traditional digital playback has two settings. There is 29.97 frames, which is just shy of 30, and then there's actual 30, which is kind of the, the new standard um, at a minimum. 60 is actually kind of the, the preferred um, freight, uh, especially when you're working in HD quality. But 
that's what drop frame will do is that it'll augment down to the 29.97 frames if you're already working with video um, or as I mentioned in other videos reference video or if you want to match that kind of time scale and video that may already be shot um, or other things that may be in that that time scale um, that's what drop frame is um, it will augment what you're doing right now it doesn't really have any effect because I'm less than <laughs> I'm less than that as it is so not worried about that okay so that's a lot of information now let's actually do some animating right now let's get my digital pen and let's put in where we're going to start so I'm just going to start very basic something like that <clears throat> and I'm not too worried about the shape because I can fix that later I am going to arrow over which I can do because I made the keyframe that's another advantage of having them there <clears throat> and this is the onion skin you see how we have this reddish version if I don't like red for some reason I could come here and I could say well you know what? I really like blue instead blue, blue is how I want to work so you could do that that makes more sense probably right now <clears throat> all right so the next frame is okay well it needs to come down about there okay starting to come off the uh, the flower okay so next top is it's coming down and we're gonna just progress this until we get down and maybe that's sufficient you get the idea all right so I'm actually going to remove this keyframe I don't need it and then I'm actually going to space these out again because I want to cover my second. I'm just going to click and drag them. Left mouse button using Windows. There we go. <clears throat> All right. And we can do a quick playback here. These controls will go forwards and backwards according to the play speed I have set. So we can see what that looks like now. And as I mentioned earlier, we can play with the playback speed. So I'm going to drop that down to 30%. And that really kind of lets me see the individual pieces more clearly if I really wanted to. Maybe I want to make some adjustments, like um, I want to check out this frame. And yeah, you know, I really don't like the shape of that. So I'm going to use my adjustment tool here and just trim that up a little bit, add a little bit better perspective. Maybe I want to rotate this one a bit more. Just the shape. This one looks a little too fat. There we go. And just touch up the last one to be on the ground there. Okay. Put this back up to real time and play it through. And there we go. Now we could come back and fill in the blanks if I really wanted to here. For example, here, what I could do is I can copy this frame and I could paste that and work on that for a second. So Maybe what that needs to do is kind of bridge some of the gap here a little bit. Bring that in between the two. And again, I'm going to copy that. Paste that next. And we're going to tilt that down a little bit. And again, fill in some of that space. And let's see what that looks like. So you'll notice how it begins to look more and more fluid and you could build things this way where you could roughly build out the motion and then later come back and fill in some of those gaps i know that gets more complex with more sophisticated drawings but the same principle applies that you can rough it out it doesn't have to be perfect the first pass through as you do the motion and in fact i'd suggest you not do that because you might be able to identify course corrections that are easier to do on a rough sketch like doing every couple of frames and then coming back and filling in the, the finer pieces um, just to make those those things more permanent, more fluid, and not spend so much time every frame and then have to correct every frame. <laughs> All right. So 
So just to explain how the audio portion of this works, you have to click on this speaker and you actually have to add in the audio that you would want to do. All right, and this works very much like the approach of it's just going to kind of park it on the file. You don't unfortunately get to see it <laughs> down here in the timeline. Um, so in that aspect, it may be better to export your animation and then add that in later. We have a bit more control over the audio um, where you can adjust fade ins and, and match it up with the video a little bit more clearly. This this approach is kind of like a yeah, it's nice, but doesn't really give you any control over <laughs> that piece of it. So no, that's what it is. It's there if you really want to try it. For exporting, you would have to go to File and Render Animation. And this is on an image sequence. But I want to do a video, which I can do. You'll have to point to FFmpeg wherever you download that to, the FFmpeg executable. Choose your format. And this assumes that you're exporting to wherever you're working from in this project. So good practice to save it. <laughs> um, or you can, you know, of course, pick that. Um, as you go, but it's assuming that's where you want to work. And click OK. That is everything to do with the animation piece. We covered all the controls, we covered brushes, we covered adding layers and things. Um, there's another video I did showing and demonstrating vectors, which also includes how to do something called the tween with opacity. That is the deal. All right. So thank you so much for uh, joining along for this. I really do hope that this was helpful. Um, I do know that I touched on some of these concepts in the previous video, but I really just wanted to take the time to show you how to achieve working through and actually animating something and, and just how simple that was, right? I don't even feel like that was more than a few minutes of actually drawing <coughs> and um, doing the process. That was the fun part. I did a lot of explanation just so you can get a sense of things. But anyways... This has been Photo Learningism. It's been fun for me. I hope it's been fun for you. If this information was useful for you, please consider giving me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the awesome projects that I have coming up. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video uh, along similar concepts. Also, don't hesitate to leave a comment. I love it when people join the conversation. And the questions are not just for me. It's just for the learning community that I'm looking to build. So jump in, leave a family-friendly comment or question. Let's get that going, all right? Take care.